from southwestern Washington. It has been dry here recently, so I need to water my yard plants. My hose is too short to reach several plants on the periphery of the property. So I switched to the jet setting and now can reach the plants. But it's a poor way to water plants and I waste a lot of water by my poor aim and also by runoff. The obvious solution is just to get a longer hose, but I'm not a master of the obvious, so another approach is needed. This calls for the bleach bottle button dripper water approach. A button dripper will be needed to make this device. The one gallon per hour button drippers are more resistant to plugging than the one half gallon per hour drippers. The task at hand will be to insert a button dripper into a bleach bottle. Select a drill bit size that is slightly smaller than the shaft of the dripper to ensure a tight fit. Then properly address the bleach bottle. Hello, bleach bottle. Nah, that's not what I mean. Drill a hole near the bottom of the bottle. Then insert the dripper by pushing and twisting. Oops, it appears that this hole is somewhat too small, but it'll be just fine. Now the bleach bottle button dripper is ready to use. I filled the bottle with water and it's working like a champ, just dripping away. For the sake of curiosity, it would be interesting to learn the dripping rate. Water was collected in a graduate cylinder for one minute. Only about 10 milliliters of water were collected in a minute. That would only calculate to about one-sixth of a gallon per hour. Well, the one gallon per hour rating only applies when these drippers are used in a normal fashion at a pressure of 15 to 25 psi. But the pressure from a nearly full bleach bottle was only about 0.3 psi, so naturally the flow rate is less. Will the dripping rate slow down when the bottle is nearly empty? Yes, when only an inch and a half of water remains in the bottle, the dripping rate has noticeably decreased, as would be expected because now the water pressure is only about 0.05 psi. In fact, the flow rate was only about 2 milliliters per minute. I double checked this and collected water for 3 minutes and got 6 milliliters, which is 2 milliliters per minute. I filled the bottle up again with water and carried it out to my hydrangea plants. The water is dripping while I'm walking, but if it only takes me a minute to reach my plants, only about 2 teaspoons of water will be lost. Okay, Miss Hydrangea. It's watering time. The watering bottle will remain there until the following day and then the adjacent hydrangea plant will be watered. A dwarf Japanese holly plant also lies beyond the reach of my watering hose and will be happy to receive this bleach bottle button dripper waterer. Dripping will continue for about eight hours before the bottle is empty, so it's reasonable just to leave the bottle there overnight. In a moderate climate, plants might be watered every other day or every third day. In hot and dry climates, plants should probably be watered every day. Other types and sizes of plastic bottles may also be used, but of course, an apple juice button dripper waterer doesn't have the same ring to it as a bleach bottle button dripper waterer. Advantages of slow drip watering compared to sprinkle irrigation include deep wetting of the soil, no wetting of the foliage, less surface wetting, and it conserves water. Suggested spacing between bottle waterers would be 2 to 4 feet for a hedgerow bush and 2 feet for vegetables. You may fertigate, which is fertilizing while irrigating, by adding soluble fertilizer to the water a suggested rate of a teaspoon per gallon, 
A suggested starting point for fertigation frequency is every two to three weeks for vegetables and every two months for lawn plants and adjust as needed. And folks, that's how and why I use bleach bottle button dripper waterers. Mm -hmm.